The next point is that the map is not the territory. So this is related to this idea of language that we've been talking about. But one of the biggest mistakes that scientists make today is that they are so wrapped up in symbolic understanding of nature or reality that they confuse their maps and symbolic representations of reality with reality itself. This is the trap called mistaking the map for the territory. This is a huge trap. I will have a whole separate episode just about this one idea, that the map is not the territory. There's a, a really powerful quote from Wyatt Wood Small on this topic. And he says, the better the model, the bigger the problem. The better the model, the bigger the problem. Remember this quote for the rest of your life. This will be crucial for you to, to uh, unravel the nature of reality. Because you see, science really is in the business of creating models of nature of representing nature, which means you've got nature and then you've got a representation, a copy of it. So science is sort of making copies of nature. These copies it's making are oversimplifications within a symbolic realm. And scientists assume that this is the only way in which we can understand reality is by making copies of it, simplifying it, using symbols, whether it's mathematics or English language or what other uh, other kind of models? You know, it could be sort of a, a ball and stick, a model of a molecule in chemistry. Uh, but basically, all of modern science is just models. And these models, of course, are upgraded every year, every decade, every century. We develop new and better models, and they become more and more accurate in a sense. And you might say, well, that's great. That means we're getting closer to the truth. But we're not. We're not. No matter how good your model is, your model is never the truth. The truth is the territory itself, not the model. And you might say, well, it doesn't matter because as long as I can use the model to manipulate reality, that's it. The truth doesn't matter anymore, but it does. It does in ways that you can't even imagine yet because you're stuck in this paradigm of modeling everything. And you think that, Modeling, everything can be modeled, but that's an assumption. That's an unscientific assumption. Are you thinking that? What if everything can't be modeled? What if there are things that are true about reality, important things that you cannot access through modeling? What then? What do you do then? See, the reason that science is such a powerful illusion and that it's so difficult to deconstruct is that once your models become very, very good and accurate enough such that you consider them reality, you forget about reality, you throw reality away, and then you just live within your world of models. And you forget that reality exists independent of models at all. And this becomes extremely dangerous. So this is what the quote means. The better the model, the bigger the problem. As science becomes more accurate, it becomes a greater illusion. People stop caring about anything beyond the pragmatics of the models. Whether it's the scientists or just the layman, they stop caring. They stop caring about truth. They stop caring about any deeper metaphysical issues, any epistemic issues. It just becomes a purely utilitarian activity. And this becomes very, very dangerous. And that's the state of modern materialist 21st century science. It's virtually impossible to even communicate to a modern scientist the problems of the map is not the territory because... They are so lost in their models, and they have to be in order to succeed in their careers and with their work, because all they're doing every day is working with models. That to them, 
the territory has been completely lost and they can't even conceive in their mind why anybody would care about the territory because all they care about is models. Because when you have a hammer and all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Everything looks like it can be hammered down. But of course, a hammer is just one tool, one modality. There are other tools. Science is stuck with this hammer. Presently. It doesn't have to be. It just is right now. It won't be forever. It just is right now in the 21st century. So science, one of the biases of science as a methodology currently is that science is very biased towards exploring nature and reality through thinking and through symbolism and representation via modeling. So much so that that is the only way it knows how to explore reality and therefore it doesn't even know that there are other methods. Science does not know of direct methods of investigating reality separate from thinking, symbolism, and modeling. And when someone like me comes and tries to suggest a direct method, a method which is more direct than experience uh, or thinking or symbolism, this doesn't compute for people. It doesn't compute for a scientist. A scientist doesn't understand that a direct method is possible. What do I mean by a direct method? I mean that Imagine that there is the territory. What most scientists assume is that, well, yeah, Leo, sure, there is a territory, but we can't really know the territory because we're, we're just limited humans. We have limited minds. There's no reason why evolution should give us the tools necessary to penetrate to the very substance of, of reality. So all we can do is we can just study our experiences of reality. That's it. But that's an assumption. You're assuming that you don't know that that's actually true. In fact, what's possible is for you to have direct consciousness of the territory without models, without symbols, without thinking, direct access to the absolute truth of reality. That's possible. But you weren't taught methods for how to do this in school or in university, and none of your academic friends know how to do this. So to them, it's as though it doesn't exist. It does exist. But you have to go outside of the current limited confines of science outside of it. Now you might say, well, Leo, but, but even if these direct methods exist, they're not science, and so I'm not interested in them. But again, remember, as we talked about in part one and part two, how you're defining science is the whole problem. When you say science is just this, and direct experience is, is outside of science, that, you're assuming that that's okay. You're assuming that's how it should be. But again, that's just an assumption. What if there's a problem is that you've, you've drawn your frame, your little box, too narrowly, and that you need to expand your definition of science to include direct consciousness? You see. But this would require you to break away from the academic herd that you've been brainwashed with going beyond that into something new, something that isn't yet considered science, but will be in the next century to come. You see, the reason it's so difficult to accept the things that I'm saying here is because I'm saying things that will only be accepted by mainstream culture and academia a hundred or 200 or 500 years from now. Like I said, this is advanced stuff. And you might think, well, Leo, you're so arrogant thinking that you can see 200 years into the future. <laughs> but it's just, it's, it's just obvious. Once you do the work I've done, it's just obvious. It's not a matter of arrogance. You can see precisely the limitations of science. 200 years forward, you can see it. But that doesn't mean everyone around you can see it, you see. So if you're looking to others around you to validate what science will look like 200 years from now, they won't because they can't see it. Very, very few people today can see it. Maybe one in a hundred can see it. Probably even less than that. 
So if you want to if you want to see what science will look like 200 years from now, you need to break away from the pack, from the groupthink, from the institutions, and you got to go beyond that, outside of that. Because of course, by definition, something that's going to be 200 years into the future, it's not going to be inside of the current paradigms. It's going to be something radically different and new. And it's going to be unacceptable to many who are entrenched in the current paradigms because people at MIT and Caltech who are, you know, who are earning good money and who have a lot of reputation and status as world-class scientists, they don't want to admit that they're that there's something deeply wrong about their worldview. This would be embarrassing to them as professionals. This would be deeply embarrassing. This would discredit them. They have to go to their graves believing that their system and way of, of looking at reality was correct and was the best way and that there was nothing better than it. 